And how are we all doing today? This is Tamir Seer, and I have with me the game FE Area, or Iron Area, if you are hip to your chemical symbols, because FE is the chemical symbol for iron. I'll stop talking about it now. Uh, this is a bit of a first here, because I haven't really done any just strictly online multiplayer games, and that's what this is. I decided to start it right here at the uh, little waiting for game lobby, just to demonstrate the fact that I've been the only person playing it for the about hour or so that I decided to see what it was all about. So I don't have any footage of actual player on player combat, instead just fills it with pre-generated bots. So that way you can actually do something in the game. Uh, the first one I decided to try out here is this little... Sp it, it's called a spider robot. It only has four legs though, so it's not an actual spider robot. It kind of reminded me a bit of uh, Battletech's Tarantula, in all honesty. But it's... It's got this little ability where it makes these little robot drone dudes that run around and they're just walking bombs is all they are. Just go and find the enemy. I kept getting hit by like these artillery strikes or aircraft strikes. I don't know if that was somebody's special ability I never figured out or if it was some other mechanic entirely where that was coming from. I know I never got to do anything like that. Now I've only tried three technically four of the vehicles that are available in the game. There's uh, three walkers and three tanks and three rovers as they call them. The one's like a trike bike with a giant gun on top of it. And the other two are just, they're just wheeled vehicles that behave like the tanks just on wheels. So it's kind of trying to sell itself as some kind of different take on the MOBA kind of formula, you know, where it's a generalization of three lanes and you have your champions or heroes or whatever you call them. Here I'm trying to attack the base thing because I'm like, well, I got into the base and I'm not being shot by the turrets so I can try and blow it up since the objectives are either blow up the base or let the timer run out and have the most kills. I don't find out till later you can't actually hurt the base building to kill the turret buildings which is you know how a MOBA works I'm not always super hip to it because I'm not the biggest MOBA player that's out there like I had the odd beginnings I guess you could call it of getting into that League of Legends because Everybody else I knew was getting into it and kept telling me to play because they're like, oh, you play strategy games, you'd probably like it. I'd be like, okay, fine, I'll try it. And I put it in, and League of Legends, at least back then, when you installed the game and went to the tutorial, it asked you, are you familiar with real-time strategy games? And I put myself up as pretty high in knowledge of real-time strategy games because, I mean, like, one of the first games I ever played was Command & Conquer, which was later called Command & Conquer Tiberian Dawn because they ended up making sequels and had their own branching timelines and things that are in there. But I typically play a lot of strategy games. It's one of my preferred genres that are out there. I can be fine with real-time or turn-based. doesn't matter much to me. So I told it, yeah, I'm like really familiar with it. And then I'm sitting there in the tutorial after it starts off, like, okay, um, looking around. All right, I don't, I, we have our starting structure. I don't have any builder units, so this is, this is not a base builder one. Okay, I can, I can figure that one out. And then I tried clicking around on the different objects that were in the game space, and I didn't, nothing happened. I didn't get anything from that, because I was trying to apply my logic for my other strategy games that I've used and it said are you familiar with strategy games it's a strategy game and I tried that and it wasn't working then the minions spawned and then I kept trying to box select the minions because I wanted to gather up my forces and 
try and take an alternate route through the center area of the jungles, but instead they were just stupidly walking in a single file line down this one open lane, and I'm like, what are you doing? It's Stop doing that! It, I was in the tutorial for five minutes before my champion even so much as moved, because I kept trying to apply different real-time strategy games to it. Now, don't get me wrong, I won't say that there's not strategy involved in the MOBA or like a League of Legends game. I'm not going to say that the, there's not strategy there. It was not the strategy I was used to. I mean, this is especially even more when I was coming off of trying the uh, the big 4X games, like the Total Wars and all that. And that game, those do not line up with a MOBA at all. That's, it's just not even close. If you play a bunch of 4X strategy games you try and play a MOBA, it's like they're not even the same genre at all, other than the fact that they're top-down. Uh, right there, I was like, well, this is a safe base area thing, so because I'm hurt, maybe I get healed up there. There's a little thing in the back, which I ran over, which gives you some heal. And has a bit of a long cooldown, so... Really, your incentive is just go out and try to kill as fast as you can. Because when you lose health, you're not really going to get it back and waste, unless you waste a lot of time not doing anything. Which isn't very productive. And you kind of have to get out there and do things because... Well, the AI bots aren't the smartest. They kind of just spawn and run in straight lines and hope something works and about all you can hope for out of them. You'll have to excuse me if I keep having these little pauses. I happen to have grabbed my little uh, Culver's cup of Reese's peanut butter cup vanilla custard. It's, it's ice cream to me for all I give a damn, but it's custard and people get mad if I don't refer to it as such. Just gonna take a quick spoonful of that. Maybe I shouldn't be doing it while I'm recording myself over this pre-recorded footage. But you know what? Whatever. That's what I'm doing. So, I, I gotta be honest with this. Just overall with this game, it's the concept of what it's doing. I could kind of be behind because when all the MOBAs were just let's just copy Dota 2, which was also copying League of Legends. When when they were just set up as that. We're just gonna straight, just carbon copy those two games and be the exact same thing they are and try to get popularity. Yeah, there's a lot of MOBAs that came out that I had absolutely no interest in. But then when you have a game where it's like, well, we're taking the MOBA approach, but like right here, we're trying to apply something different. Okay, let's take a look at it. Because I'm all for trying to mix up that style of game. Oh, there we go for a little base rush. It doesn't last very long, as you can see right there. Because the AI, as soon as they see a player, in air quotes, spawn up, they immediately just full tilt focus on that, rather than try and kill the base when all the other guys are leaving the base. So, we didn't really get much of a push going there. But yeah, like, trying to mix up the idea of a MOBA I'm much more in support of rather than just rehashing the same two games over and over and over again. That's one thing that's kind of weird. The game ends by you exploding. So here we get to try out a tank. Um, the thing that I noticed with the tanks though is they slide, at least this one, slides quite a bit. And here I take way too much damage because I tried to deploy this Earthquake ability, which is what it has, and the turret is... The turret's wonky. It doesn't always want to go to where your cursor's pointing. I haven't been able to figure out why the turrets behave in the fashion that they do, but they behave in that fashion. Uh, I do also realize here, right here, you can use a scroll wheel, which goes into the right behind it, which... At least for playing the tank with what I'm used to playing as was actually pretty helpful. I genuinely felt I ended up doing better this match as the tank because I figured 
this out. But, uh, yeah, that kind of leads into the thing of the, what I've been trying to say but interrupt by commenting on the captured footage. Which is that it feels like it's trying to be a MOBA, but it's combining more of, like, your, your World of Tanks into it. Like, I would, I would say this game is kind of a World of Tanks meets Battletech meets MOBA. And that's what they're trying to go for, which sounds like a, 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 somewhat of an interesting idea. Now, you notice here that the middle ability is different than what we had on the mech, and that's, they went with, because I told you there's three robots and three tanks and three rovers, well, all three of the vehicles in that category each have a shared ability, which is the Q, so all the tanks have the, where you get that red effect going, which is a temporary uh, damage boost to your gun. Uh, the robots all have the little flying jump that we did. Of course, I can't shoot over into the base area, even though my shots can easily go over that. So why would we let that happen? But, uh, yeah, the robots get that, uh, jump boost. They get to turn on their jump jets. And, uh, the rovers get, like, a little temporary energy field, which really reduces the damage they take. I don't believe it makes them invincible. Reduces the damage. Uh, here we actually start to make a really decent push into the enemy base with. I think it was called the Hunter in this game. Every time I see that robot, though, all I can think of is Battletech's Cougar. I mean, it's not exactly a one-for-one -one imagery there, but that's that's what I think every time I see a thing. It's just immediately it looks like a cougar. Um. Like, all these shots I'm doing here, because I'm taking all these nice long-range shots, I feel I'm pretty much only able to do that. And then, uh, here I rush at the guy, but I'm actually trying to get behind him. Because that that's one thing I haven't mentioned yet that I actually like, is, um, your different armor facings actually matter in this game. So, like, when I'm shooting at that tank there, the, the one that I killed just a moment ago, when I'm shooting at him on his front, he's not taking as much damage because that's where his armor's all built up. So, to fight your tank, you want to try and get behind him and get a rear shot on him because then it starts doing more damage. See, like right there, if you look, we actually start doing a little bit more damage. Actually, I don't think I have any footage that it's really apparently noticeable about the different armor facings meaning something, but they mean something. I mean, it's not a super advanced thing like you get in a World of Tanks or War Thunder where you can angle your sloped armor properly to get shots to bounce off of you where if they would have directly hit you, they would have gone straight through and started wreaking havoc inside the vehicle. But it's, it's more than just, oh, we'll just hit the tank anywhere. You apply the same amount of damage regardless. I think right about here we about get the victory of low base. No, I get blown up. It, it does happen. I'll... I guess I'll just spoiler that. Probably the best run that I had was as the tank, because I was able to complete the actual objective before the timer ran out. Taking a buy out of the ice cream. Sorry, frozen custard. I'd be crucified if I call it ice cream. It was annoying here on this run that this tank, at least, its vertical traverse of its gun is not very impressive at all. It's got about like a 20, 23, 25 degree little region of vertical traverse. And that's that's pretty minuscule. Probably would have been helpful if there was a way that you could just like basically lock the turret onto somebody, but you can't, but you know, whatever. That's just that's just the way it be. I think the walkers are probably less susceptible to the armor face being much just because their legs are separate from their torso, because they can torso twist. I'm going to use my Battletech terms here, and I'm not sure how that affects the armors of them, because like the spider, his legs are a lot of the mech, but for your other two bipedal ones, um, your legs aren't that much of the structure, so I don't know. I haven't really messed around with it, because... 
one issue this game kind of has is that the when you're playing in the map, it just feels really barren and dead. Like there's no background music, the sound effects. It's it's the same. Just like when you're in the tank, just your your treads rolling around, and you get the little pew, pew, pew of shooting your gun. But that's about all the sounds you ever get in the game. So it gets across really quiet, and it kind of. For someone like me, it makes me tired because there's just there's not much going on. All right, here we get to try out the rover. I will warn you right now, I do not complete a full run as this because I end up going with the really fast jump into a team fight that's ongoing behind, pop out some damage and run away because you have like no health. And with the bots, it doesn't work too well because they don't coordinate for teamwork. Like, it'll sometimes seem that they're doing stuff that's teamwork like, but they don't coordinate well. When you're playing a, a unit that requires coordination, it's not all that fun. We also got jammed on that and uh, I do frequently keep making a mistake. I keep trying to use the mine, which is the E ability. It has like a gravity mine. And I keep hitting the F key for whatever reason. I wasn't doing that in a previous run, and I don't do that in other runs that I do, but I kept hitting the F key. Which is a... brings up a little radial menu of quick things to say in a chat. It unfortunately does also full stop the vehicle from any control input you were giving it. So, like, when I'm holding down the W key and accidentally press F and don't realize I pressed F, I was trying to hit E to drop mine, you end up just kind of stopped, just sitting there, hanging out, looking at all these tanks that can, like, two-shot you in the face. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of me dying in this little segment here. The, the thing that's upsetting with this game, really, is that actually playing it, it does seem like th this, like, this game was going somewhere. They had an idea of what they wanted it to be. They stuck to it. They tried to go after it. There's actual effort put into this one. Uh, one thing that I think is really, really hurting it is about your minimum purchase to get into the game. Let me let me go pull up the store page since I'm pre-recording. I'm gonna go do that. So to actually just buy the game, just play it, is six dollars, but is currently on sale for four forty-nine. Which, okay, honestly, for the assets that I'm seeing here and six dollars and how it actually plays and functions the way they want it to, I don't think it's a terrible price point for it, in all honesty. But it's six dollars to get into a game that has in app microtransactions in it, and I don't have an image of it, but like their in game gold for. 10 of it is like, I think it, I think 10 of it was $5 if I remember right. And what can you do with those $5 as far as I was aware? You could buy a skin for a vehicle. And it, it honestly seemed like the in-app stuff was pretty steep for what they wanted. And it's just hard to stomach the idea of we're going to put in these steep microtransactions or really just microtransactions in the price range of a free-to-play game, but they're still going to charge you up front to get the game anyway. Now, granted, I'm pretty sure it's just because it's an early access. They had some packs. You do get like a week of their premium account and they give you extra resources and a little bit of gold just by putting the game in for the six dollars but if that's if that's what you're reconciling the six dollars is for does that mean you're later going to come out as an early access game and then now you're going to try and bring the people on when everybody else who played it had to pay to actually be able to play it first because some people are probably going to be miffed at that it probably would have been better to just, if you're playing in early access, get some of those rewards you had, and then just focus on your in-app purchases. Now on top of that, they do also have their two additional 
price points to get in. They have an, a Universal Soldier Founders Pack. I don't know the contents of it, but that's $15. Actually, why don't we click on it, see what the contents are. Okay, let's see here. You get another week of their premium account. You get uh, 3,000 more of the earned currency. And 30 more of their gold. And get some unique skins. And you get access to new vehicles a week before they come out. Yeah. Okay. But again, it's $15 for an improved game that, as I was playing it, nobody was, you know, in. Um. Oh, I was confusing the hell of myself because I went back to the Steam page and their, their trailer music started playing because I have the videos to autoplay and the sounds on. And I was like, wait, there was in-game music playing while I was playing this? I didn't hear it. I'm not hearing it till now from the pre-record. And it's like, no, that's not what happened. Okay, uh, let's see here. They also have their Ultimate Founders Pack. Let's go look at the Ultimate Power Founders Pack. Let's go look at what's in that. Um, oh, in case you're curious, the footage here is since I figured out about the zoom-in thing, I was like, well, let's take that spider that we had and see if we could do, like, super awesome with it. Do all right. Don't manage to kill the base, but I do all right. So let's see here. And their ultimate founder's pack, which is $31, you get an extra 30 days of their premium, so about a month and a day, 7,000 of the earned currency, 50 more of the paid for currency, the unique skins from the last pack, the, uh, the week preview for their new units coming out, and it's like a, an extra skin pack for all the vehicles they have in there. I'll be honest, that $31 one seems a bit much. So, what I'm trying to say overall is what this game's trying to do. I think it's interesting, and I don't mind this style of MOBA coming out. Like, I actually felt that there were people going on, and it was, you know, had more polish to it. It is early access, so there's still room for improvement. That's kind of what I'm trying to suggest here. But if there were like people actually playing it and actually playing the game, it felt a bit more alive to play it. I can actually see having some fun in this game. Like I actually started to figure out kind of how to approach things and I started to feel like I was getting the hang of when you should use your abilities trying to do some cool stuff. Like I could actually see a mouthful of peanut butter cup there. I could actually see if like, this was an actively going game, the spider guy. I was actually really enjoying that and the tank I tried earlier. I could see really putting some some time in the game to get those guys leveled up. I, I'm not sure I would have paid the microtransactions since they already had the upfront charge. But, you know, if it got like a really legit game and I had that $6 into it that I already have, I could see maybe kicking a bit more to it, because I'm that kind of person, if your game has microtransactions, mainly if your game has microtransactions in it and it's free to play, if I play it and either I really enjoyed it or I put a lot of time into it, like 30 plus hours, then I personally will get an obligation like, well I put that much time into it so I must have enjoyed it a bit, I'll decide I'll, I'll kick some money their way. Like, I keep actually meaning to, even with uh, a bunch of those uh, mods that are out there for some of the games that I mod a lot. Some of those ones where I basically feel like I can't play the game without these mods, I really keep meaning to throw money at them. Like, uh, what's one big one in, uh, in Skyrim? The uh, Falskar mod, which if you haven't tried the Falskar mod, I don't think it's there for special editions, so you still have to play the normal edition. But if you haven't tried the Falskar quest mod, that is a pretty fantastic quest mod. And I know when I got it, I've, I keep meaning to when I have a bit more stable income to be able to do it. Just like throw 20 bucks at the guy to be like, dude, this is basically like one of their DLCs. And 
it feels like it, it has the content of it, I feel guilty for not having paid a $20 price entry fee to get into this. So that, that's kind of where I sit with this game. If it gets more developed and actually had people in it, I could actually see playing it. But of course it needs some improvement, it needs a bit more to it, and the microtransactions part of it, it's like... They should really decide, is it going to be a free-to-play, or is it going to be a paying upfront charge and continue to have microtransactions in it? I mean, I've already hit the part with this spider guy where I'm like, I'm starting to feel like I need to grind it out, but it also feels a bit more grindy because there's nobody to play with, so I'm sure there's some of that. Like right here, I actually start to feel like I'm getting an idea of how to approach this. I know if I was playing with actual people, my strategy here would probably not work nearly as well, but with the AI not being the most intelligent, I'm able to make it work. So I almost managed to basically kind of take the base by myself. I do the majority of the work for it by myself. I know that. Just getting back here and just doing sneaky, just pop in, pop out pot shots at the turrets until they finally go down. I keep making the robots because I keep hoping they'll attack the turrets. I don't think they will, but it's also not a terrible idea for in case one of the AI decide to come over and try and ruin my fun, uh, they can run over and do quite a bit of damage to them. So yeah, I think that's, that's kind of where it's left at. It's like this game's had effort put into it. I do wish the developers the best of luck with it, but like if I look at it strictly as an early access game, they've got a solid base to build on. I really feel this game has a solid base that they could build on and actually do something with. So, they can keep going with that, and I think that's fine. Their microtransaction things, I mean, on top of what I've already said before, microtransactions in general are in some hot water right now. They at least do not do the loot box thing. Your microtransaction is buy the currency and you pick what you're buying with that currency. So it's at least got that part to it. It's not not a gambling thing. But for their microtransactions, the prices they're at in there, this should really be a free cost game. It shouldn't have an upfront cost to get into it. Um, let's see here. What else can I say about it? Yeah, it just... This game actually had some players and then they stick with it to develop it, which it does seem like they do plan on sticking with it to develop with it. I could see this being something, and like I said, personally, I find a game that would behave like this more interesting than your traditional MOBA. Like, I know when my group was playing Smite for a while, I was enjoying Smite because though it had a lot of the traditional MOBA feel to it, it did feel different because there was also the involvement of the player's skill in there of being able to measure out. Like, I was getting really good at that 3D space deal and Smite of being able to lay walls with it and had some accuracy of down lane with actually using abilities on people. So, yeah, I I feel I feel like I like a MOBA style like this more than your traditional MOBA. So, again, I wish the developers the best luck with this game and I feel like I could get somewhere. I just don't know if it's there. Oh, yeah, that's me trying to figure out how to exit the game, but it was up there in the top.